Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry, the first real lecture after, well, the first lecture was more like an overview of what I have in mind regarding algebraic geometry. Keep in mind that, well, watching YouTube videos is actually pretty good. I, I think you can learn a lot of cool things using watching YouTube videos. So hopefully this one will be useful and helpful, but in the end, really, it's practice makes perfect. So it's probably a good idea to pick up some book, some exercises, and just to keep this, these YouTube videos here that I'm making the lecture series as kind of an inspiration or uh, as a way to understand algebraic geometry. In the end, of course, I hope that you will understand algebraic geometry in your own terms, and I'm just giving you my very biased point of view on what's going on. Just keep that in mind, right? So there is no silver bullet, um, clearly, you need to work a little bit, it won't come for free. But hopefully it will at least be enjoyable, at least the, the videos here, and maybe it gives you, as I said, some idea uh, what's going on, maybe uh, some basic understanding you want to get or whatever. Anyway, let me just jump right into the main point about algebraic geometry. Um, zeros, or in a more, well, jargon type fancy language, algebraic varieties. So algebraic varieties, that's really the, the main definition of algebraic geometry. I'm not, I'm not uh, over the top here. It's really the main definition of algebraic geometry. Everything else is kind of motivated to, in some sense, generalize it, understand it, or whatever. But this is kind of the main definition. So if you are, uh, if you like this definition, and if you think that's something reasonable you would like to study, then probably algebraic geometry might be for you. Or then algebraic geometry might be for you. So let me just sketch what is going on. I'm interested in zero sets. So I'm interested in taking a polynomial equation. Here's a nice polynomial equation. I like that one. It's a polynomial equation defining a circle of radius r. So take that polynomial equation and like, like on the right hand side. And yeah, and look at the zeros, right? So the, the, the points in the plane satisfying this equation are exactly uh, well points on a circle of radius r. And let's hold the whole point of algebraic geometry. Algebraic geometry studies zero sets of polynomials, usually in kind of many variables. Uh, in almost all illustrations, I st will stay with two variables because that's easier to illustrate. But usually there, there are just many, many, uh, many variables involved and we are kind of trying to understand those zero sets of those polynomial equations. That's a little bit different or actually really different from what most of you probably have seen, namely, we are not so interested in finding roots, the, the kind of formulas for the roots of polynomials, um, because that's essentially hopeless. So here, maybe, I mean, this one is hopefully familiar, the quadratic formula, probably one of the most important formulas you ever see in your life. So it's solving a polynomial equation. It looks very similar, right? So we are doing here polynomial equations, looks very similar, but the formula solves it. So it kind of gives you um, a, a, a formula for the roots of that polynomial. And usually those formulas are really, really, really difficult to get. Let me just uh, pull up here from my second screen um, the cubic formula. So we can zoom in a little bit here. And uh, the cubic formula for a polynomial of the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is completely insane. Uh, so let's see which one is a nice one here. This one is probably a nice one. Yeah, this one is good. Let me just open it in a new tab. So we have ax cubed plus b x squared plus c plus d. And um, this is one of the solutions. Um, do we really want to look at that? I'm not so sure. Let's, let's rather close it. <laughs> so uh, the point is, finding those formulas is like really difficult and essentially impossible from a certain point onwards. And that was known when people started studying algebra, algebra geometry. So we are not interested in finding uh, solution formulas because that's, that's, not, that's not happening. It's just not happening. Let's face it. We are more interested in describing the shape of the solution. And then hopefully we might be able to say something about more explicit points or something. But like here, the shape of the solution is a circle. And that's what we are really interested in. In kind of zero sets of polynomials, what is their geometry, right? So that's why algebraic geometry, and that's why it's not called algebraic formulas. Uh, well, that was uh, almost funny. It was almost funny. Um, for example, degree one, 
So degree zero is kind of something I will ignore all the time. De degree zero will be constants. The degree of a polynomial equation is just the high, highest ex uh, appearing uh, exponent of the variables where you need to take into account something like something like this, you just sum over all of them. So here's one, one, and two. So this would be a degree four uh, expression. So degree one is really linear things. So I just have a plot here. So if you have a degree one polynomial equation, y equals minus x plus five, then the points satisfying this lie on a line, something like this. Um, if you do it one dimension higher, so one more variable, x minus y plus z equals zero, then the solutions will lie on a plane. So degree one solutions here in algebraic geometry, they're usually a bit boring. Uh, so we're going, they definitely want to go higher because this is like linear algebra. These are the linear things like lines, planes, hyperplanes, whatever, the higher dimensional versions. So degree one is the lines, not the linear stuff. And the degree, you should think of this as a measurement of how com complicated or how difficult your shape will be. Degree zero, as I said, like eh, constants, I'm going to ignore those. Degree one and degree two is always already uh, very interesting. So degree two is would be the circle, for example, right? right? We had the circle here of radius one as a degree two equation. Um, the ellipse, the parabola, the hyperbola, are other examples of degree two equations. And they usually come up as conic sections or classically they came up as conic sections. And this was uh, understood for a long time. Maybe people didn't have this picture in mind, which I like a lot. So what are conic sections? Well, you can take a cone and just dissect it with a hyperplane, right? You get, would get a circle or whatever. Or you could think of a cone as a light cone, let's say of a, a light bulb or of, of a flashlight or something. And if you just put it on the, kind of point it towards the wall, um, and if you just point it completely straight, you will see a circle. If you point it a little bit, was a little bit of an angle, you will see an ellipse. At a certain point, if your angle gets too high, you will see a parabola, and then afterwards you will see a hyperbola. Right? So the conic sections and my hyperplane intersecting the light cone is the wall. I hope that makes some sense. And all of these are degree two polynomial equations. Well, ellipse, circle, parabola, hyperbola. So degree two is already kind of kind of interesting. Um, they're still very doable, and degree three will re enter the realm of, uh, well, what is it called? Elliptic curves and friends. So degree three already gets super interesting, and we want to kind of set up a, a language, if you want, in algebraic ge geometry, a toolbox, such that we can study polynomial de equations of arbitrary degree in some way or form. So the main definition, hopefully there was enough uh, kind of motivation, and uh, the main definition is then of an algebra affine variety. I usually call them algebraic varieties, but they're the different versions of algebraic varieties, so just let's call them affine variety. And affine is essentially just saying, hey, I can draw it in some vector space. And here's the definition, it's just a set of zero sets of a polynomial. So f of v equals zero for all polynomials in a given set that we already fixed. And in particular, in principle, we can do that over all fields. So it can be any, any field you want, Usually I like um, the the real numbers because then I can nicely draw it. Um, at, at one point we just need to go to the complex numbers because kind of polynomials of the real numbers are a little bit ill behaved. If you just think of the the first polynomial that doesn't have a nice root, uh, something like this, yeah? and there's a polynomial over the real numbers that doesn't have any roots, but over the complex numbers it does. So usually the complex numbers are a little bit easier. Um, for the experts here, so algebraically closed fields are usually a bit better in algebraic geometry than in other fields. So that's why at one point we need to go, sadly, sadly, uh, who likes complex numbers? Anyway, we need to go to the real numbers at one point. Uh, sorry, so the, from the real numbers to the complex numbers. But all the pictures I can draw, they are always, always real. Because C, right, remember C is just R plus R, so it's kind of double, double dimension. So the, the first interesting example of a complex variety would be in dimension four, which kind of doubles this again, right? The first interesting example that I can draw of a real variety is in dimension two, like this picture here. And the first uh, example of a, of a complex variety would be in complex dimension two, but it's real dimension four. So uh, there's not much I can draw, I guess. 
Well, Dimension 4 is still drawable, but it's a little bit... Nah. Well, our brains are certainly not adjusted for Dimension 4, and that's usually why I will stay with R. Anyway, that was a long raffle. All I'm trying to say is this definition of an affine variety is like extremely crucial. It's, that's what we want to study. Zero sets of polynomials, and we do it in the following way. We fix some polynomials, and we just look at all the vectors in affine space. This is where the name comes from. Uh, K to the N that are kind of where the polynomials vanish. Okay, there are also other forms of varieties, but we don't need to worry about them um, at the moment, like the projective or the abstract varieties. For now, for now, studying these varieties is totally fine, and this is essentially what people call classical algebraic geometry. Now, study the study of those uh, varieties. You might want to take the projective ones for classical algebraic geometry as well, um, but we'll do that later. Right now, I can only just tell you, instead of taking values in affine space, so that the field to the n, r to the n, the one things I can draw, I, they would take values in projective space. That's, that's actually what they are. And then usually things get a little bit nicer, actually. But let's not worry about it. So this is the main definition, an affine variety. Well, sounds good. And the magic of algebraic geometry is that it includes these examples. Here are the nice examples. Uh, everyone likes the circle. Does someone doesn't like the circle? And feel very sorry for you if you don't like the circle now. Well, I, I think I don't like the circle, but that, that's, I'm just weird. Anyway, um, so linear things, for example, or those guys, degree three, degree four, but also more exotic type of objects are covered by algebraic geometry. So this notion of an affine variety is actually quite a general notion. There are a lot, a lot of affine varieties. And the magic somewhat of um, algebraic geometry is that there will be a machinery where you can talk about very, very different objects using just the idea of their zero sets of polynomials. Here's one that doesn't come in immediate to mind. Um, if you've never seen this before, the matrix varieties. So SLN, let me just do it like this. SL2, here's a nice Cayley table picture of SL2, F3. But anyway, uh, SL, SLN K, which are just N by N matrices with values in K and determinant one. So it's called, usually called SL, like special linear. Whatever. Special linear is determinant one. N by N matrices with determinant one. And that these guys form an affine variety. Right? They're very different from the examples like the conic sections here, but they still do. And how do you see that? Well, let me just do the two by two case for you. So in the two by two case, I have a two by two matrix, but I can just consider the entries as variables, right? I can just write down something like this, uh, hoping that I get the row and column convention correct. And the determinant of this guy would be something like uh, x11, x22, minus x12, x21 equals 1. And that's a polynomial equation in four variables in this case, right? So this is a polynomial equation. So the set of matrices with determinant 1 is an fn variety because it's, it's kind of defined by a polynomial equation, in this case given by a uh, the determinant. And this is kind of a very nice and quite different example from uh, what I've showed you so far. And this, the same is true for whatever, n by n matrices. It's just a little bit more painful to write down uh, the determinant. And as you can already see from this example, you would have many, many, many variables in this case. So usually we are interested in those many, many variable examples. Anyway, so the magic of algebraic geometry is that it kind of gives you a language to treat all of these examples in one go essentially and that's pretty cool and that's what we are going to explore anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope to see you next time